Hi there, it's Rob from Octopus. Welcome to Octopus Deploy 2018.2. This is a big release and I'm really happy to share it with you. This month, we've added the start of our first class support for Amazon Web Services, including Amazon accounts and new step types. We also added support for project dependencies, which was one of our most highly requested features on our user voice site. Let's get started. I have a local Octopus server and I have three projects. First, I'm going to head over to my infrastructure. So I have two environments staging in production. The thing I'd like to highlight is our accounts. And the new thing here is our Amazon Web Services account. If I look at my developer playground account, you can see the key information here is simply my AWS access key and secret key. And once I enter those, I can save that, even test it, and then I'm ready to interact with Amazon Web Services safely and securely. Now I can head over to one of my projects called Quote Service. And Quote Service is a simple ASP.NET Core web app that provides quotes as a service. I'll be deploying this website to Amazon's Elastic Beanstalk. And Elastic Beanstalk is a platform as a service or pass service that allows you to deploy your websites and run your websites without worrying about the underlying infrastructure. To do this, it's quite simple. My deployment process has three steps. The first step is a transfer package step, which is just making my package available to the rest of my deployment process. Then I'm using a newer step type, an AWS script, which makes the AWS command line interface available to copy my package to S3. The final step is to deploy an AWS cloud formation template. This can provision my infrastructure if it doesn't exist and also deploy my application altogether. Cloud formation templates are very, very flexible. So there's many ways to achieve this, but this is just one example. I'd like to point out that the first two steps will be simplified in a future Octopus release. We will be adding a built-in S3 step. So that will make it much simpler to upload packages and files to Amazon's S3, which can be used in other steps. I'm going to jump in and take a look at the AWS script step. I'll expand all. And you can see that the steps are executed on the Octopus server. And you have to specify your AWS account. This is done by specifying an account variable. And that's kind of handy because that will allow you to scope your account to different environments or different things as you need. You also have to specify your AWS region, the region you're working with, and then your script. And you, just like all of our other scripts that can be as source code or in a file inside a package. In this case, I'm calling the AWS command line, simply just to say AWS S3 copy the path of my source file and the destination bucket and file name as well. I'm going to jump back to my deployment process and we'll take a look at the other step, the AWS CloudFormation step. I'll expand all the fields here as well. And you can see again, it's executed on the Octopus server. You specify your account variable similar to the other step. And then there are some CloudFormation specific fields. So you plug in your region, the stack name, and there's a few other options. The final important fields are the template and parameters. And like I said, cloud formation templates are very powerful, but they're also very flexible. So there's a lot of different ways you can achieve this by having parameterized templates, in which case you would see a list of fields here, or you could have a template where variables are substituted automatically just using the octopus variable syntax. So in this case, I'm spinning up an elastic beanstalk and deploying an application all together. But like I said, there's lots of different ways this can be achieved. And so that is pretty much it. You can see that it's easy to define a deployment process that allows you to deploy AWS cloud formation templates and interact with the AWS command line, all utilizing an Amazon account 
for simple authentication and authorization. Now I'm going to jump over to our Quotes Bundle project. If you look at our deployment process, it has two project release steps, which allow me to have a parent project that deploys child projects. Now, this is extremely valuable for projects that are commonly deployed together as a bundle, but it also lets you manage dependencies very easily. This has been a popular request. Some teams building microservices do have some dependencies that need to be deployed together and this can now be achieved. In this case, I'm deploying two websites. And the first one we've already sort of explored, which is the random quotes or quotes as a service website. In this example, I also have a product marketing website for that service, and they have been split. And you can imagine they are managed separately, but when there's a big release or revamp, they can be bundled together and deployed together. If I jump into one of the steps and expand all, we can explore what these steps take. So the very first thing you can see is that you have to select a project. The next two fields allow you to customize things further. The first allows you to control when this deployment should run, including always or when the selected release is not the current release in an environment, or when the selected release has a higher version than the current release in that environment. The other thing that you can do is you can also pass variables to the child projects. And this is extremely handy if you want to pass variables, output variables from one project to another, thus coordinating things between multiple projects. Now I'm gonna jump back to our deployment process and I'm going to create a release to show how everything works together. Now I'm going to call this 1.00 and you can see that I have a release for each of my two child projects, both the quote service and quotes website. They haven't been deployed yet. So I'm just going to enter a release note product launch. I'm going to save that. Yes, I want to deploy to staging. Now I can just review my deployment. Things look good here, but before I click deploy, I'm going to jump over to my AWS console and just look at Elastic Beanstalk. And you can see that I don't have any applications here yet. So my quote service will provision the infrastructure this time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click deploy. So my deployment completed successfully. And if I head back over to AWS, I can see that I now have a new Elastic Beanstalk application. And as per my CloudFormation template, I have two new environments. So if I look at my staging one and I just launch the staging URL, you can see my application has been deployed. And you can see it's version 1.0.0 running in the staging environment. My quotes website, if I just open a new URL and navigate to it, you can now see it was also deployed and it was version 1.0 running in the staging environment. You can see that it's easy to deploy a parent project with child projects, and this enables you to bundle project deployments and manage dependencies. This is a great addition to Octopus. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to try something mentioned in this video, head over to octopus.com trial to start a free 45 day trial. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we're adding new videos every week. See you next month and happy deployments.